Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll provide an overview of how an RNN works. And so here's our objective. Okay, so an RNN is a feed forward network. And so, uh, you know, let's say that we have a single word and we want to classify it or, or translate it into a different language. And we can represent that word as a vector with positions x1, x2, x3. So maybe this is just only words of three letters or less. And this is our, our network for doing that, okay? And so we can abstract all that inner workings away and we say, hey, here's, uh, you know, here's kind of the architectural block. And we go from input vector x to output vector y hat. And so here, I'll just reorient it a little differently. So I said, okay, we could do this for one word, but you know, what if we want to do it for multiple words? Well, maybe we just put a bunch of them uh, together, like so, right? Now I have three words, one, two, and three. But um, something is, is missing here because if I'm speaking a sentence, the each word, uh, the context and meaning of it, you know, has some relationship to the previous words in the sentence. And if I have just three independent neural networks analyzing individual words, um, it's probably going to get some pretty uh, bad results. So what we want to do is we want to add in um, a notion of an internal state. So we can think of, hey, when I get ready to translate word x2, I'm going to keep in mind this, you know, hidden state h1. And when I go to translate word x3, I keep inside or keep in mind the hidden state uh, h2. And so what happens is we can think of each of these units that gives us a y hat is taking as input an x input vector as well as something resembling the hidden state from the last layer that you know is also a byproduct of that last or that last unit. So this is just pointing it out. There is our input at the current uh, time step, and here is the history as of the previous time step. Now notice, since each time step is taken in the previous history, we can also assume that H2 somehow encapsulates the relevant information from H1 that is needed for the next step. Okay, so this is, uh, you might have noticed in the slide headings in the last uh, slide or two, it said unfolded. Well, here is the folded up view. This is a recurrent cell. And the reason why it often gets drawn this way, where you have x, y hat, and you have this hi variable going in kind of a loop, is because that this architecture, you want to have the weights be the same within each of these cells. So you only need to specify it once. And that's you know, a really key uh, intuition with recurrent neural networks. So let's look at the inner workings as how this works for a single recurrent cell. So as input, we can think of the input to a recurrent cell as a concatenation of two, two vectors. We have xi and we have h of i minus 1, and we have a, a layer uh, that uh, you know, considers both of them. Now the output of that layer is now hi. That's our internal state. So that internal state will both be output to the next recurrent unit, but it's input to another layer inside this unit, and that layer will give us uh, y hat. So this is the output for the current layer. So notice that hi gets passed on to the next recurrent cell, but also is used as output for uh, the result of this cell. Now, these two layers, now notice that the weights 
uh, between these two layers are going to be different, and they kind of have to be because uh, they're, they're sized differently. But the, these weights are the same weights as in every other neural cell um, that is specified uh, in the architecture. So that concludes this uh, lecture on introducing you to the basics of RNNs. Uh, please stay tuned.